Say hello, my little friend! I'm Jeremy. <laughs> what are you doing here? Ah, I thought, uh, thought, uh, Macaulay Culkin would be here. Wrong? If you've ever researched a product for months prior to purchasing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is absolutely out of control. I would do nothing to control you, although YouTube will. If you try to say something snarky, expect a clap back. Maybe not from me because I'm incredibly busy, but I will do my absolute best. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Big thank you to them for supporting the channel continually throughout the last year. Guys, the biggest supporter of the channel, however, is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. 99 cents to get in. Cheap products, of course. We have Vertex, our sick gloves, bags, and all that goodness. Go ahead and check them out. Ladies, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, but not by me, F-15 Eagles. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very cool pistol. Thank you, ATF. Uh, we have the AKV in 9mm. Now, if you've been following Palmetto State Armory in their quest to make this, you know that there have been uh, updates to it and that type of thing from uh, a variety of different sources that have helped them do that. But we're not going to be talking about the history of this gun because I don't do that. We're going to be talking primarily about this iteration and how it is, how it performs, and we're going to do our normal tip-to-butt thing and just have a good old time with it. So, before we get into this, so the question is, what is my relationship to Palmetto State Armory? Well, besides buying a ton of magazines back in the day from them, there wasn't really a whole lot up until recently when I asked them if I could do a review on this because I was very interested. Uh, they acquiesced and they sent me this along with ammunition, 3,000 rounds in order to test out this particular firearm. It's pretty standard as far as um, agreements I work with companies, so I don't think that there's some back scratching going on beyond that. This is typical of many guns I fired. So in any case, this particular firearm has 2,000 on it with another 1,000 on a buddy's just for uh, testing sake because I always expect that any firearm that I get from a company is likely cherry picked. I never expect to get like an off the rack model because um, I'm, I just don't think they do that. But um, all benefits of that aside, let's go ahead and let's move forward. So this is based on the Vitiaz or however the hell you say it, SN which is a 9mm submachine gun that uh, hails from Russia. Now, however, with this one, it is a direct blowback. So there are definitely some things changed. So first off, we're going to do what we normally do. We're going to go tip to butt like we always do on every firearm we talk about, including this pistol. And it is a pistol because it has a brace. Good times, ATF. So moving to the front here, we have our standard muzzle brake that is pretty common on a lot of firearms that are uh, modeled after the Vitiaz SN. In any case, I don't know that the brake does a whole lot for the gun. Um, there's not a whole lot of concussion coming out the end of a 9mm barrel. In any case, I think it does add weight. It is a thread protector, and beyond that, any amount of blast that you do have is redirected to the sides. Is that good? Is that bad? Uh, I had a couple camera guys on either side, um, and I had buddies on either side when I've been shooting with this. They haven't noted that it's any more concussive than a variety of other firearms that I've been uh, rocking through that are 9mm. So I don't believe that a whole lot goes on with the muzzle brake, and that's my honest opinion on that. That being said, 
I have nothing against that. I think perhaps a flash hider would have been a better option, but this is what we have. Now, what is cool about this is that much like other uh, Russian muzzle devices, they did it the same way. We have that little pin that retains it, and then when you screw it off, that sounded weird, uh, you have threads. Those threads are half by 28. That is the typical thread pitch that you have for a suppressor. So pretty sick. Um, what's also cool is that beyond that, this particular firearm was tested with plus P plus rounds that the suppressor added. As you know, a suppressor greatly increases pressure um, on the firearm. So we know that this is very much so overbuilt um, to withstand those pressures. So I think that they did a really good job there. Um, they definitely were forward thinking in that. The barrel is 10.5 inches nitrided 4150 steel, which is excellent quality. Um, that's precisely what you want in a pistol caliber carbine. I love nitrided barrels. I seem to have very good accuracy and performance and uh, corrosion resistance from them. And this seems to um, be no different. Now, as far as distance goes with this, um, make many other pistol caliber carbines, you're not expecting to really push the nine millimeter that far about the uh, total effective range from a nine millimeter is around 200 meters. It's Maybe. Uh, I think 100 to 120 is a pretty good approximation of what you're going to get a good effective hit with. 9mm is not a very ballistically energetic round. So that being said, it is around 6 to 7 MOA, slightly less than a well-made MP5 on its accuracy. But that being said, uh, the accuracy on the MP5 is phenomenal. And for all intents and purposes for which this is designed, it it's going to have no problem setting the targets that it needs to. Understand that at 100 yards, uh, you're looking at the very edge kind of, of the effective range of the 9mm. So doing 6 to 7 MOA is perfect. I've been very happy with this um, setup. Now that being said, I'm sure that there are people with uh, good loadings, better optics, and better shooters could probably uh, do a better job of making those hits than I did. So understand, I'm sure that actually could probably be pushed a little bit. I'm just reporting to you in what I've seen from my shooting uh, for accuracy with this particular firearm. We have our front sight block right here. It is not a gas block. This is a direct blowback firearm. It's not really siphoning off gases. But in any case, uh, when it comes to that, the sights are pretty rudimentary, but they're good. We have a hooded front sight and we have our fixed rear notch. And it is very much so AK-74 you like. And when I got these, my sights happen to be just dead on the money. Um, my buddies were slightly off. He had to do a little bit of adjustment, but once he did, it was good to go. So the sights are rudimentary, but they are excellent. No complaints when it comes to them. Um, AK sights are a little bit kind of um, just rudimentary. I kind of wish they would have just done an entire rail up through here and then somehow moved the rear sight back, much like many modern AK platforms. They didn't do that, and that's fine. They kept it more traditional, and I'm sure there's a lot of engineering that goes into that, but you have what you have, and it works uh, fine, no big, no issues there. Moving up to the handguard, uh, the handguard is really cool. So this is their M-Lock slash Picatinny handguard that comes from PSA. They did a really good job of designing it. We have M-Lock um, right near the gas tube and right near the barrel. And then of course on the bottom, we also have more M-Lock. After seeing a couple newer Zenitco rails that have come out, I think that they could have thinned up the handguard a little bit. What is cool about them is that they accept normal AK furniture, so you don't have to go searching around for some weird PSA, you know, AKV furniture. So I like that they did that. That being said, I think that they actually could have probably sucked in this handguard a little bit and made for kind of a smaller, more compact package, which is which would be good in this case. They didn't, and that's okay. Um, that's kind of a newer concept that's been seen come from certain handguard manufacturers for the AK platform. But these are perfectly acceptable. They're very rigid. They're good for lights, all that type of stuff. If you want to mount any type of IR device up front right here, this is a very sturdy mounting uh, platform and you'll have no issues retaining zero with a variety of de devices out there. Okay, moving back from there, we do have a forged trunnion and a forged bolt and bolt carrier. Um, it's pretty freaking cool actually. PSA, this company that you wouldn't have thought of, of making these phenomenal AK platform, platforms are really pushing the limit on what they can do with the AK world. So I've been uh, really impressed with, with what they've been doing. And Forge, just incredible. Um, the machining is excellent. I mean, compared to like, you know, something really high class, you're, you're not having as good of machining, but for what you're getting for about 900 bucks, pretty incredible um, and incredibly strong. And that's what you want, especially on a direct uh, blowback firearm. All right, now moving from there, before we move on, have to do it guys. 
If you own a firearm like this or anything cool, you should definitely be looking into home security. So you guys know this video is sponsored by Simply Safe. I'm not going to beleaguer the point other than to say that I do believe in the system. I do like it quite a bit. And why I like it is, you know, compared to other uh, brands out there, you can kind of piecemeal it together. So, you know, especially E4 is balling on a budget. I've been there and I didn't have a whole lot of money to spend on you know, home security system. So with Simply Safe, you can buy things that you need at a time. You know, you need the camera, you need the window break sensor, the door alarm, whatever. You can buy it as you acquire the money to buy it. And what's also cool is that you can kind of configure it based on what you need. So, you know, you have a room where you have your safe uh, with all your firearms in it. You can put a little extra security there. You can put, you know, door opening sensors and you can put cameras in there so you can just find somebody breaks in and at least catch those bastards. So the point is I like that it's customize, customizable. It's made to work in adverse con conditions and it just rocks. Can't say enough good things about it. Big thank you to them for supporting it. All right, with that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into it. There we do have traditional AK charging handle. It is right-hand sided only, much like any AK out there. Of course, um, like many others, I love the left-handed charging handles, especially like on the FAL and stuff. I wish that it'd become more common on AKs. It's not, maybe something that can be done in the future, but as of now, we don't have anything. So up here we have our rail dust cover, much like many modern AK platforms, they've incorporated it into the front sight as a hinged mechanism with a good sturdy lockup on the back to make sure that you have a good optic mounting platform because um, mounting optics on the top rail cover without some type of good reinforcement is gonna lead to a wandering zero and you're not gonna get your shots where you want them. Now with this particular setup, I haven't had any issues holding zero. Now that being said, anytime you're changing elevation, pressures, all that kind of stuff and temperature, you're gonna to wanna to re-zero your optic. But for what it's worth, I think that the rail is gonna hold it pretty steady. Now, every time I do slam that dust cover back down after I unhinge it and stuff, I typically do re-zero, but um, that's just me being super cautious and that type of stuff. But uh, pretty awesome setup. Now I have an EOTech on here. Now combined with the height of the um, stock right, not stock, brace right here, um, we have a pretty high optic, but I kind of like that for a lot of my um, pistol caliber carbines. It allows for a really upright head position. Uh, you can shoot with nods on it passively. It's kind of cool. But what's nice is if you do a low mounting optic, like our aim point right here, um, that's low enough where you can actually witness the iron sights through it. So you have your backup iron sights if you need them. But of course, without a low mount, you're not gonna be able to see those. As a quick note for you who are wondering about that. The magwell, this is where it gets really cool. So the magwell is slightly flared, easy to insert our magazines. Um, what is really cool are the magazines and everything that goes along with it. So unlike many other AKs, the AKV is a bolt hold open type firearm. That's really sick. Not only that, but we have a bolt release on the left-handed side. So how it used to be is even if you had a bolt um, hold open, you'd have to insert the magazine and then either reach under or over or use your firing hand and rack to that charging handle to then release it and let the round forward. But with um, this new system, as soon as I, much like an AR, as soon as I insert, just bring my thumb up and you can see that little paddle right there. I just depress that to depress the follower and it drops the bolt. That is really, really cool. That is a really cool design. I really hate to directly compare this to Kalashnikov's 9mm, but in that way, it is far superior. I think that's a really cool uh, thing right there. Another really cool thing is that the magazines use, one, the standard magazine is 35 rounds. I like that they just increased it from 30 to 35. They're like, ah, oh, screw it. Yeah, we'll do 35 rounders. And what's really cool is that they use the form factor of the CZ Scorpion magazines. So we have a CZ Scorpion magazine right here, and they work as well. No problem. So that is really cool because CZ Scorpion mags are phenomenal. And I'm a big fan of the way that CZ designed them. So I think it was really forward thinking of them to use that same form factor to design their own magazines. And not only that, but PSA being the mad lads that they are, actually have been selling these for super cheap. So we have an FDE one right here. Um, we have a smoky cleared one right here. And then we have a 35 with a 15 round extendo for 50 rounds right here. Um, the standard magazine is around $13 to $15 typically. That's crazy. That's, that's really awesome. I love it when companies support um, the firearms with cheap magazines. I hate really expensive magazines because you should have as many as you possibly can. So they did a really good job there. So a couple notes. CZ magazines, which are 30 rounds, run fine. 35 rounders run absolutely fine. They are just bulletproof. They just work so well. 
The 35 rounders with the uh, 15 round extendo, not quite as good in my opinion. I've had a couple issues with these. I have about, I have five, and of those, two of them are slightly unreliable. And that's kind of the name of the game when it comes to extending, uh, to having those magazine extensions on mags. That's just kind of what you deal with. But, um, you know, kind of be a little bit wary there. I would definitely say, you know, get at least one and screw with it because having 50 rounds in a stick mag is really cool. PSA also just doesn't care at all. And they sent me like every magazine they had. So thank you to them. But they also sent me the 50 round drum. Um, this thing did not work at work for me at all. Um, it constantly jammed. So I'm not going to recommend this at this time. Maybe I got a lemon. This is a sample size of one. So understand I could have just gotten a bad one. I've heard that other people have had good um, experiences with them. I haven't. Now this is very heavy, that being said. It is uh, full metal. I, I prefer the 50 round stick mag. And of course the 35 rounders are absolutely awesome. I love their slightly smoky translucent ones like this one right here. They are just phenomenal at, um, it's, it's just cool to be able to see the rounds and easily in, find out how much you have in there. What's also cool is that they're not cheaply made. So the magazines, we have steel reinforcements on the feed lips. There you go. Really cool design. Um, can't say enough good things about what PSA has done there. Now that we've overused the word cool, um, quick note here, um, to release a magazine, it is a paddle release, much like many other AKs and CZ platforms. Okay, moving back to the trigger. So the trigger is something that is very cool. So they use an ALG trigger on this particular model. There are two different models. Um, the one with the ALG trigger does cost a little bit more but it's really, really worth it in my opinion. So let's talk about it. The ALG trigger is slightly customized by them and uh, it's just phenomenal. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put on some Unchained Melody. We're gonna go ahead and ghost this trigger together. So first off, putting your finger right over mine. Go ahead and feel that. So we have a millimeter of... <laughs> we, have <a> mil... <laughs> we have like a millimeter of take up and then that thing just lets off. Okay, reset maybe two millimeters of reset. Oh shit. Uh, that's uh, on mine. It feels a little less than two pounds. It is ridiculous. And my favorite thing about this is because the reset and the pull are so short. It is so easy to bump fire this thing. Um, you can bump fire it in your shoulder. You just simply hold it there and just kind of pull it forward and you're going to bump fire. It. You can bump fire it off your hip. Uh, I can't say enough. It's really cool. I love this trigger. So they did a really good job with the trigger there. We're going to do that one more time You feel it trigger once more. A millimeter take up. God, that is sick. And of course that goes to ALG as well for making a great trigger. But uh, PSA did their homework when putting this together and that's uh, an excellent part of it. Say hello, my little friend. Again, with the furniture, you can use any type of AK furniture. They're using a Magpul grip, that's fine. No issues there. I do prefer a more shallow grip angle, but that can easily be changed and it's perfectly acceptable as it is. I don't have any problems with like having my hand on there, having any wrist issues or anything like that. Safety, it's easy to have a shitty safety in an AK. Um, PSA has done an excellent safety and they have that nice little ridge right there so you can simply get it with your finger. So it's pretty quick when you are Going to fire and going from safe to fire, it's it's fairly it's fairly fast, not as fast as an AR, but when it comes to AKs, PSA has done their homework and they've done really good things there. All right, moving back from there, we're gonna get to the stock. So the stock adapter, again, a really smart move from PSA. I swear they got good guys working for them. Uh, they did a 1913 adapter. Um, awesome, the 1913 rail kind of initiative taking over where braces and stocks um, use the 1913 adapter to attach. I, I think it was SIG who first started it, and I might be wrong. Uh, it has been an awesome movement in my opinion. I love it. I love how easy it is to swap them over. So it was a great idea for them to go ahead and use the 1913. And on top of that, they made a really cool brace. So the triangular stock is a super iconic when it comes to the AK world. And I like that they made a brace that's the triangular folder. I mean, the you know, the regular stocks, the SBA 3s and stuff that they had on before, they're cool, but it just looks so much better, in my opinion, with the triangular stock on there. It does fold as well to the left side. Pretty awesome. You can change the levels depending on the height of your optic as well by simply moving it up and down uh, Picatinny slots. Uh, the brace itself is polymer, so it feels really good on the cheek, kind of grabs on your cheek and it keeps it in place. A little flimsy down there at the end, pretty solid up top. 
and uh, just a great design. Really can't say enough good things when it comes to just the entirety of this. I just love it. I, it's sick, it's run reliably. And that kind of brings us into how does it shoot? What does it feel like to shoot? So in the grand scheme of things uh, for firearms, mild, of course, it's a nine millimeter. When it comes to comparing it to other nine millimeters, it's stout and violent. So to date, this is the, uh, this nine millimeter pistol caliber carbine has the most recoil compared to any other um, pistol caliber carbine that I've ever fired. You know, and that's not obviously, it's not uncontrolled in any way. You can see I'm easily double tapping with this. But at the same time, there's good and there's bad that comes along with this. So you have more recoil, got to get into the gun a little bit more. But at the same time, because of the way they balance it, it does cycle violently, but you know it's going to blow past any debris. It's going to function reliably. So it's a little bit of give and take with everything. The direct blowback action that they're using is an incredibly reliable and just it will power through anything. There's a good reason that H&K moved to the direct blowback on the UMP. But at the same time, you have more recoil. By Kevin having that sharp recoil, you know it's just gonna chew straight through leaves. Um, AK Operators Union, if you don't follow him, he's a great guy. Um, he did a pretty extensive test on this and this thing was just chewing through like swamp matter and stuff and tons of people have done torture tests on them and they just chew through everything. So it, again, it was a design choice by PSA. Uh, if it's a problem with you, you know, maybe get better at shooting. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, it's not gonna be for everybody, but I really like what they've done. And beyond that, what is it like to shoot? It's fast. Because of the speed of the cycling with the direct blowback and the shortness of the trigger, and you can run this thing so fast. So if you are at all a proficient shooter or you spend you know a couple hundred rounds firing on this and you dry fire and you spend some time on it, this is a very fast gun. In fact, I'm faster with this than I am with an MPX, a uh, MP5. It's just, yes, more recoil, but at the same time with everything that happens with it, I'm just faster with it. It is a fast fucker. So I love this <laughs> firearm quite a bit. I've, I've quickly fallen for it. When I first got it and I first shot it, I was not impressed because I was like, wow, that's a lot of snap for a nine millimeter. But God, it has just grown on me. So when it comes to this, can I, do I recommend it? Absolutely. I think PSA is doing great things. They have a lot of great products out there right now and they definitely deserve your money and your time because they are just doing great things in the community. Definitely give this a chance. If you have a chance to fire it, definitely try running this bitch hard and fast because that is the way it is meant to be shot. They run about $900 to $1,000 uh, for this particular model, I believe is $999. So for all intents and purposes, $1,000, but absolutely worth it. Uh, here's the thing, as cool as this thing looks, it's not gonna matter unless you get training. So make sure you get training, ladies and gentlemen. Tons of great guys out there will give you training. Cogworks, Bear Solutions, my dad, Haley Strategic. Uh, we have um, uh, Pat McNamara, tons of great guys. Core Vision, Darcy, Esoteric. Get out there, get that training. So much knowledge out there for you guys to become good at these firearms because that is what really matters. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. And as is normal, I've got nothing else for you. Last thing for you guys. Make sure that you change the oil in your car. Pretty simple, doesn't cost a lot of money, and it will save your car in the long run. Take care of your car, and it's important. Guys, you know if you've gotten this far, Patreon. My Patreon people help me out the most. You help um, purchase lights, camera equipment, everything. I can't thank you guys enough. Support me on Patreon. It's what really keeps this channel going, and because of your support, this is just a better channel overall. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. For real, we're done this time. Take care.